Here we have a very simple setup. Two pieces of paper that are holding up pails of sand. Pails of sand of the same weight. On this side we have a very narrow strip here that's only half inch wide at its narrowest point. This appears to, much, to be much stronger. However, we'll introduce a defect here deliberately with a pair of scissors at the point where the stress is high. And immediately we have total failure. What happened was all the weight of the sand was concentrated at the very tip of the crack and produced a tear that raced across the paper for total failure. Now, we can do this again with a narrow strip of paper to see more clearly what is happening. I'm pulling on this with all my strength of my thumbs. I'm even jerking on it and it holds up quite fine. However, I introduce a defect here and then pull again, and total failure. Let's do that again. Strong strip of paper, everything appears to be fine. Pulling and jerking, introduce a small defect in the top of the paper, pull again, and total failure. Now, in 1945, a pressurized airplane was flying in midair and exploded and 35 people were killed. Nine years later, in 1954, an airplane of the same company exploded in midair and 21 people died. Now, <clears throat> after the second explosion, the airplane was, the, the fleet was very carefully examined and they found that uh, around the antenna there was a small stress concentration that began and ripped through the whole plane. Let's um, look at another setup here. I have here a piece of wood that is cross grain. Now this wood is cut across the trunk of the tree, not the long way, the short way, and it's supported on two uh, pieces of wood here, and I'm going to apply pressure with this clamp. This is part of God's creation here, wood. But the fibers here are going up and down instead of across, and this wood will break with very little warning. Let's apply some pressure here and see what happens. It has bent a little bit. Let's keep going. Total failure. The Fiber lines are going across here. In this case, they're going up and down. The fiber lines are going up and down. Very little warning and total failure. Now let's take this out of the way and put another example here. This is the way boards are usually cut, the long way of the tree. This is very similar to the fibers in the legs, the leg bones, in our leg bones. So let's apply some pressure here and see what happens. This is a piece of fur which has very strong fibers. Let's listen and see what happens. There was a little warning, a little bit more. Okay, let's take the clamp off and see what happened. As you can see, a crack started on the underside of the wood, but the wood is not totally ruined. There are still some fibers, and if we work very carefully, we could still use this. Now, this is very similar to the bones in our legs. The fibers run the long way, and our bones are under great stress, first of all, to hold up our weight, and then if we kick a football. The tendons in our knees put extra strain on our leg bones. So, why has God done this? The theme of Proverbs chapter 8 is wisdom. Does not wisdom cry out, and understanding lift up her voice? Um, let's look at verse 22 here. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way, before his works of old. I have been established from everlasting, from the beginning, before there was ever an earth. 
God had wisdom before the earth was ever created. When I was in engineering school, we had lectures in the morning and labs in the afternoon, and we spent many hours in the labs in the afternoon very carefully examining and measuring details of God's creation and forming conclusions in accordance with what we had learned in the morning. However, God didn't need to do experimentation. He didn't need to listen to anyone. He had wisdom before there was an earth. Let's look at verse 31. Here is wisdom. Rejoicing in, in his inhabited world, my delight was with the sons of men. The exercise of God's wisdom is for our good. Now therefore listen to me, my children, for blessed are those who keep my ways. Blessed are those who keep my ways. There's a blessing in getting and using wisdom for the good of God's people that we won't find in the foolishness of sin.